Life always seems to be a constant struggle between your brain and your heart. It's like, I really, really want to do this, but I should probably do that. I, I really think that person is super hot, but it would never work out between us. And sometimes it's hard to choose which way is the right way. It's like, should I follow my brain, the more logical way? Or should I follow my heart, the kind of more feelings way? I've been really thinking about what it means to live recently and I'm talking about really being alive and I've been thinking is life really just about following your heart and following your feelings and doing what feels right or is it about making logical choices and like smart decisions is life just about being the best person that you can be or is life about something more there's this story in the book of Genesis it's about a man named Joseph and I'll quickly go through this story, I'll kind of paraphrase it, but you should read it. It's like really freaking awesome. But there's this guy, his name's Joseph, and he has brothers, and his dad makes him this fancy rainbow coat. It's a, called the coat of many colors, it says in the Bible, and it's really amazing because like there's biblical proof that parents pick a favorite child, and if my brother's watching this, big hint, I'm the favorite child. But. Um, Joseph was the favorite child. It says so right in the Bible. And his dad made him this coat of many colors. And he goes to his brothers and he says, check out this cool coat dad made me. And he starts to tell them about this dream. And he says, guys, I had this dream that we were all like barreling up hay and all your guys' hay came and bowed down to my hay because my hay was way better than your hay. And then Joseph continues and he says, I had the dream that the sun, the moon, and the stars all bowed down to me. And his brothers, of course, got super mad. They got super pissed. And um, they decided they were going to kill him. But one of the brothers actually convinced the other brothers, instead of killing him, to just sell him off into slavery. We're going to douse some goat blood on this coat, and we're going to make Dad think that he's dead. That way, it's like we don't have the guilt of killing him, but at the same time, like, he's definitely not coming back. So, um... They do that, they sell him into slavery. And um, this story is amazing because Joseph goes into slavery and he ends up being like the top honcho slave at this house that he's a slave at. And he ends up being in charge of everything over the owner. And what happens at the very end of it is the wife of the owner actually tries to seduce him. She tears off his clothes and he runs away. And it's like, it got really good for Joseph and then it got really bad. Because when she tore off his clothes and he ran away, the wife said, Joseph tried to rape me and now he ran away. So Joseph ends up in jail. So he's in jail. Now get this, there's this guy, he's a baker. And inside the jail, the baker has this dream and he interprets the entire dream. He says, this is what it means. This is what is going to happen. And this is, you know, he goes through the whole thing. and. Later on, he, he tells the baker, he says, hey, if you remember this, if you remember what I've done for you, basically try to get me out of this place. So it's actually really cool. Joseph ends up in jail and he ends up being the head honcho again of the jail. He ends up being in charge. And it was a couple years before, or the baker got out of jail and then a couple years went by and the Pharaoh of Egypt had this dream. And he went through everybody under him and said, if nobody can interpret this dream, he's like gonna freak out. He's gonna just get super angry, but <laughs> start doing some Pharaoh things. But anyway, um, they, the baker actually remembers that Joseph interpreted this dream. So he brings Joseph out of the prison and he tells the Pharaoh about him and Joseph comes over and he interprets the entire dream, tells everything that happens. and. Long story short, uh, the Pharaoh actually makes Joseph the head honcho again, puts Joseph in charge. And I love it because it actually shows that there was a big famine in the land and his brothers came to get some wheat and his brothers didn't even recognize Joseph, but Joseph was in charge of giving food to his family that sold him off into slavery. It's like this whole huge turnaround and it's just an incredible story. You gotta read it, it's freaking awesome. So you probably like, Casey, what does that have to do with anything that you've talked about? And I want to tell you, there's something really important inside this story that you have to pay attention to. Because if you look at it, Joseph's life was filled with ups and downs. He was the 
best brother, best family, and so, you know, his dad loved him more than every other brother, and then he got sold into slavery. He's down. And then he became the head honcho at the slavery place, and then the wife tried to take his clothes off, and he's back down. And it's just this up and down factor in Joseph's life. And one thing that you have to remember is that somehow Joseph always got back on top. It's it's like, how does that happen? I mean, like most of us, we go through life and when there's something horrible that happens, you're just kind of like, it, it's gonna take a while. Sometimes it takes a long time to get back into the game, to get back up, to get back on your feet after something terrible happens. But I have the secret. I know how he did it. This is, this is it, all right? So every time throughout Joseph's life, he held on to something. And the thing that he held on to something was what God gave him was the dream that he had from God. Remember in the beginning of the story, you have to read it too, it's, it's an awesome story, but in the beginning, it says that God gave him a dream, that all of the sheaves, his brother's sheaves, started bowing down to him. And then it says the sun and the moon and the stars started bowing down to him. Joseph, the entire time that all this bad stuff was happening to him, he held on to this dream. There's this verse in Proverbs chapter four, verse 20 through 22, and I'm gonna read it out of my super awesome, super old, taped up message Bible. It says, Dear friend, listen well to my words. Tune your ears to my voice. Keep my message in plain view at all times. Those who discover these words will live, really live. Body and soul, they're bursting with health. That's just incredible to me. It's like those who keep God's word in front of them are going to live. It says body and soul bursting with health. You wanna know how important it is to keep this in front of us, to keep this inside of our hearts? Look at Joseph. He was sold into slavery, became head honcho. He was put in prison, again, became head honcho. He was put in front of Pharaoh with the threat of death. If he doesn't interpret this dream, again, became head honcho. It's just this incredible story and how what can we do in our lives that would change if we put God's word first? If we started living life the way that God intended us to do? If we started to put God's word first inside of our finances, inside of our health, inside of our just everyday life, when we go out, just when we walk down the streets, what's gonna happen if we put God's word first? How are people's lives gonna change? How is our life gonna change? Listen, if you don't know by now, this is pretty much the magical book of destiny. This, I, I love what my youth pastor used to tell us. He said, this is your GPS. If you have any questions in life, if you don't know where to go, if you don't know how to do something, if you don't know whether to follow your brain or your heart, he says, turn to this, look at your Bible. This is your GPS through life. Whenever you're getting lost and on the road, you turn on your GPS and it tells you where to go. Most of the time, Siri is right, but there are some times. But I'll tell you, God is never going to be wrong. God is always going to be right. He is the perfect Siri. If you don't know what's going on, look in your Bible. If you don't know what to do, if you don't know whether to follow your brain or your heart, if you're stuck in life, look at God's Word. Keep it in front of you. Keep it in your heart. You're probably not going to regret it. But that's it, guys. I love you. Have a great week. Bye. made this company Ghost Graspers and it's been a phenomenal hit ever since. Hey, you guys are from Ghost Graspers! Yeah. Why, yes. yes we are! Yes we are. Oh my gosh! We tried everything from mouse traps to peanut butter, seeing if it will attract the ghosts. Hey man! Oh. Hey, how, how you doing? I am 23 years old, I am a senior in college, and I've been with these guys since, since the beginning, pretty much. I don't really see anything, but maybe we might be able to hear something tonight. Whoa. I'm gonna try to communicate with this ghost. Hello? If you can hear me, please say something. Do, do you have a name? A social security number. 
anything to tell us who you are and why you might be haunting this house.